Today I'm going to introduce you to Affinity Designer and show you ways you can use it to make your crafting projects even more awesome. Let's get started. Hey everybody, so today I'm introducing you to Affinity Designer to show you how you can use it in conjunction with Cricut Design Space or Silhouette Studio to make your projects even more awesome. So I know what you're thinking, what the heck is Affinity Designer? Well stick around, I'm about to show you. I'll even give you a sneak peek at some of the designs I'll be teaching you how to make in future videos. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. I'll also show you how you can download a free trial version of Affinity Designer so you can follow along with my upcoming tutorials and see how easy it is to use. And as a disclaimer, I'm not currently affiliated with Serif, the company that makes Affinity Designer. My goal with this video is to make you aware of additional tools to aid you in your design process. So, what is Affinity Designer? Well, it's an inexpensive, vector-based application, similar to Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw, that can help you create your artwork when you need more features than are currently available in Design Space or Silhouette Studio. One nice thing about Affinity Designer is that the designs you create with this software can be exported as SVG files as well as other formats so that they can be imported into Cricut Design Space, Silhouette Studio, or used in other software applications. Also, if there are designs you need to create to use for other purposes like logos, business cards, screen printing, sublimation, offset printing, etc. This software works great because currently there's no way to export your designs out of Design Space or Silhouette Studio unless you buy an upgrade. So let me show you just a little bit about the software and I'll show you how to get to the free trial. So what you'll do is you'll go to this website affinity.serif.com and I'll put the link in the description down below. But you can just come to their web page and you'll see we're on the designer page. There's a desktop version and an iPad version. If you're interested in the iPad version you can click on the iPad and you can just scroll through and kind of see what all the program does. Kind of gives you an overview of the tools and everything. And when you get to the bottom, um, it'll give you this little link here to the Apple Store where you can download the software. And for the iPad version, there is no free trial, but it's like 20 bucks for the software. And it's just a one-time cost. There's no subscription or anything like that. All right, so I'm just going to go back. And now I'm going to click on the desktop version. And it's basically the same thing. It just kind of shows you an overview of Affinity Designer for the desktop. And you can see here it's $49.99 for the desktop version. And it's not a subscription, so it's just a one-time cost. And this just kind of goes over the tools and what all you can do with Affinity Designer. Uh, if you have a Wacom tablet, you can use it to draw in Affinity Designer. And it's all vector, well, you can do vector-based drawing or it has a pixel mode as well, so you can draw like in raster mode as well. But the main thing we're going to be doing with this is vector-based. So once you get down here to the bottom of the page, you'll see these are all the formats that you can export files. So it's got a lot of different formats you can export in. And there is a Macintosh version and there's also a Windows version. But when you get down to the bottom of the page, you'll see you can click here to buy the software. And if you look down here, at the very bottom it says free trial. So if you just click on that, it'll take you to the free download page. You can click here and choose Windows or Macintosh. You put your email address in and you get a link here to download the trial from. Then you just need to install it. I can't remember if it's like a 30 day trial or something like that, but I'm sure when you download it, it'll tell you how many days you have. So you'll have a little bit of time to play with it and some time to go through some of these tutorials that I'm going to be uploading soon. So let me show you a few things that you can do with Affinity Designer. So the first thing you can do is you can create thumbnails if you have a YouTube channel. You can create your thumbnails with Affinity Designer like this one here. This is a thumbnail that I made for an Affinity Designer tutorial that I did on how to do t-shirt mock-ups. And if you haven't seen this video, I'll put a link in the description below and you can check out that video. And you can also use it to create your channel art for your YouTube channel, your Facebook page, your Instagram page, or anything like that. And then you can save it as a PNG file. Next thing we can do is you can create these split letter designs. These are ones that I did in Affinity Designer. And uh, you can see I just placed one here on the shirt just to kind of give an idea of what it's going to look like. This first one here, I just placed the lettering over the top of the monogram. 
This one here, I kind of wrapped the lettering around the bar and I did a little knockout effect. This one at the bottom, this purple M, I just created a knockout effect so it would give the design a little more character. And this last one, this orange M, I just did it where the letters wrapped around the bar here. So I'll show you how to do all these different kinds of effects in Affinity Designer. And like I said, all these designs you can export as SVG files and then bring those into Design Space or Silhouette Studio. All right, so number three, the next thing you can do are these popular name knockouts. And I know you can do this in Design Space, but in order to do the knockout, you have to create a bleed using the print feature in Design Space and then save that and then import it and clean it up. And then once you finally get it in there, you don't really have any control over the bleed. And sometimes when you have round letters, it'll be kind of a jagged, squarish looking knockout from using that bleed. And, uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing it that way if you want to continue doing it that way. But with doing these in Affinity Designer, you can select how much space you want between your words and the letters. So on this top one, you can see I did a little bit of a knockout. And on this bottom one, you can see I did a lot bigger knockout. So you can control, you know, how much space you want in between there. The next thing we can do is like knock out images. And I know you can do this in design space as well. You can type your text, you can take your image and you can knock that out of your text so that you have like this football inside of the text. And you can see that the black and the green are touching. And I'll show you how to do this in Affinity Designer. But I'm also gonna show you how you can do this extra knockout where it leaves a little bit of space between the green and the black. I'm just gonna blow this up a little bit so we can see the shirt. And you can see here, the green and the black are touching. And then here, we did an extra little knockout so you can see some of the t-shirt between the colors. So that just gives it a little bit different look. And I'll show you how to do that in Affinity Designer as well. All right, so the fourth thing is shadow backgrounds. And I know you can create shadow backgrounds in Design Space if you have a font that already has a shadow or if there's like a clip art that has a shadow with it, you can go ahead and fill this in and everything. But with Affinity Designer, you can create this shadow layer from any font. And I'll show you how to do that with any font that you have on your computer. And you can also do this with images as well. And then I'll also show you how to create this multi-layer shadow effect in Affinity Designer. And these, you can also export them as SVGs and bring it into Design Space or Silhouette Studio. All right, so the fifth thing I'm going to show you is how to create these text effects. I'm going to show you how to create this arch on the bottom of this text. I'm going to teach you how to do curved text. I'm going to teach you how to do circular text. And this, I'll show you how to create this text like text on a path kind of effect. Then the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to create these spirographs. This one is a decaying spirograph where it starts out big and gets smaller in the middle. This spirograph is the same all the way around. And then I'll also show you how to create this text that's in a spirograph shape. Okay, so number six is I'm going to show you how to use the pen tool. And I'm going to also show you how to create all of these custom effects. This gear and this flower were actually created using the same tool. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'll show you how to use the pen tool to create custom art. I'll show you how you can take a photograph and knock out things, or you can cut out parts of it. And one of the most important things about a vector-based program is learning how to use that pen tool. Mastering that pen tool is really important in a vector-based program, because once you learn that, you have a lot more ability to create custom designs. All right, so number seven is monograms. So I'm going to show you how to create all these different types of monograms in Affinity Designer. This one has no background. The one on the bottom right has a background with the letters knocked out. The one in the middle here are just the letters with the circle. I'll show you how to create that. I'm going to show you how to create this heart and I'll show you how to knock this out of the heart. And then this flower with the letters in it. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then if I grab my node tool and click on that flower, you'll see that I can change the shape of this flower and turn it into different shapes and create all different kinds of effects to use 
with your monogram. So that's a pretty cool little thing right there. But like I said, I'll show you how to do all of that. All right, so number eight, I'm gonna show you how to create a logo. This is like kind of like a baseball, softball kind of logo. I'm gonna show you how to create the letters. I'm gonna show you how to create this tail. I'm gonna show you how to knock out these letters out of the tail. And I'm also gonna show you how to knock out this G. And I'll also show you how to create this shadow layer. So when you put them all together, it makes a real nice little logo for baseball, softball, or you know, you can create these logos for anything. All right, number nine, I'm gonna show you how to create this Pledge of Allegiance flag. I'll show you how to set up all these stars, I'll show you how to set up all the text, and then I'll also show you how you can make the flag wave like this. And the last thing is if you have an iPad and you buy the iPad version and you have like an Apple Pencil, you can hand draw lettering or you can hand draw your artwork and you can export that as a PNG file or SVG file. And like I said before, I'm currently creating a video for each of these designs I showed you here. So I can teach you step by step how to create each of these as well as many, many more. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you'll know when the new videos are available. As you can see, Affinity Designer is a great companion app to Design Space or Silhouette Studio and at a very affordable price. So remember to go and download the trial from the link in the description so you'll be ready to follow along with my new tutorials. And if we can get at least five shares and 20 likes, I will upload all the files that I showed you here in this video that I created in Affinity Designer for my upcoming tutorials to the file section of the Facebook group. If you're not already in there, the link is in the description below. So I guess that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Also make sure you click the little bell icon and turn on notifications so you'll know when new videos are available. And if you want to follow me on social media, all the links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you later.